across the obelisk. The princess has been kidnapped. Adventurers are needed. Gather your party and set out quickly to save her as you fight against the emerging corruptions that plague the land. As you reach the forest at the edge of the kingdom, you find it, the obelisk, a long since dormant magical stone that has been activated, the source of the corruption. As you touch the obelisk, your adventuring party is teleported to faraway lands where you will find clues to the kidnappers' locations and motivations. Along the way, you meet with the many denizens of the lands. Some see you as a friend, some as an invader, some have merely been corrupted against you, and some still will even join you, become new playable characters for future runs. Across the obelisk is a rogue light that's with a T. That means there is a good amount of character and stat progression between runs. Set in a classic fantasy world, we have humans, elves, dwarves, ancient robots, friends, ratman, and everything in between. Unlike most rogue-esque games, the world of Across the Obelisk is a curated experience. Each location offers a set challenge. The enemies and events you face are essentially what you would expect to face at the location you are in. Exploring a volcano, fire, and mountain elementals. A spider cave? Well, spiders. A bandit camp? Werewolf bandits, of course. The map is custom tailored by the developers to tell an epic tale full of lore, quests, relationship, and secrets for you to discover. When you start a game of Across the Obelisk, you will be able to set up a team of four adventurers among the 16 potential unlockable characters. They generally follow the rules of the Holy Trifecta, tank, heals, and DPS. However, this distinction isn't hard-coded in the classes. The game features Cards that allow DPS to heal, healers to tank, tanks to DPS. Honestly, most builds you can think of is probably possible. As a roguelite, at character selection, you can even customize your perks. A talent tree that gives your characters all sorts of benefits. More on this later. Starting your adventure, we're given a short introduction animation and then we are off. Our first location is always a town where we are given a variety of ways to upgrade our deck, as well as we are introduced to the second account progression system, the town upgrades. Among the town upgrades, we can reduce the cost of buying cards, reduce the cost of upgrading cards, and even make removing cards from our decks free. There is a huge amount of potential customization, but for our very first run, we we're only given 300 gold, that's the currency used to buy equipment and pets, and 300 shards, that's the currency used to buy upgrade and remove cards from the decks. This 300 is a total value, so we would have to divide that tiny amount between our four characters. Considering at first, even very weak cards cost at least 60 shards, you're fairly limited in the amount of customization you're able to do in the first town. In multiplayer, this value would be essentially 75 for each character you're personally controlling. As we set off, like similar roguelike games, we are given a choice of paths. But as said before, the ch path we choose are pretty scripted. While most nodes do have a small variety of rare events that can happen, in general, they will most often be the basic events. At the end of each map, you will face the boss for that map, touch the obelisk, and move across to the next zone. There are a total of six zones, but you will only visit five of them each run. Essentially, the second and third zones have the option between blue, red, or green and the order you go in each zone does matter. As you explore the map, if you pay attention to the lore, you will quickly find references to other character, events, and happenings in the world. Your actions, good or bad, do have some minor consequences, and if you pay attention, you can discover secrets or unlock the many different characters and pets. Something to note for multiplayer, each player gets a vote when choosing a direction or option during an event. In the case of ties, a card mini game is occurs to resolve it. Battles work similarly to many other deck builders. Drag and drop your cards onto the enemies for damage and different effects, or onto your character for heals, shields, and buffs. Each turn you generate a baseline of three energy per turn per character, but unlike similar games, you are free to hold up to 10 energy between rounds. So monsters are a little bit different in Across the Obelisk. 
they will decide on how many cards they will be playing at the start of the round but you are unable to see what those cards are unless you hit the monsters with a specific debuff turn order is based on your speed or each individual character's speed so you may not always go before the enemies and some heroes will likely go pretty much last every time however there is a variety of perks equipments and cards that allow us to manipulate speed and with enough speed and damage you can make Fights that would kill a weaker party into one where the boss doesn't even get a turn. This game has a host of convenience features that I wholeheartedly support. You can have multiple concurrent runs, you can close the game without losing any progress, and you can restart a fight if you feel like it went poorly due to bad decisions. There is an in-depth guidebook that explains every card effects, as well as when you mouse over an effect, it tells you in detail what it does. The game keeps a record of your previous runs as well as there are leaderboards. The scores in the leaderboards are all completely possible which means that the developers do work to scrub cheated results. I'm sure you've seen in plenty of other leaderboards a player with 9 quadrillion points or something absolutely ridiculous like that. Now I have said multiple times that this game is more of a roguelite experience with a T, but there are options if you seek a more roguelike with a K experience for you to change the combats from predetermined to be random and you can even take it a step further with the obelisk challenge this provides a more true to roguelike experience there's no progression between runs there's no perks there's no town upgrades and instead of a preset deck for your character you select between card packages and then you're set upon a fully random map a few things to mention while controlling four characters is a blast for co-op, it can feel daunting for a single player. Scrolling through the long list of potential cards to add to the deck can cause analysis paralysis when you're at the shop. The game can feel just straight up unfair before you get perks. The power spike between a fully perked up character versus a new character is nothing short of monolithic. The game features nine different damage types as well as bleed and poison. It's essentially a little bit questionable if we even need that many. Each damage type also has its own debuff associated with it, so the amount of effects is massive. Probability choices during events can be fun, but failing at one of those probability events can result in significant penalties for your next fight or even add semi-permanent curses to your deck, which kind the quietly discourages you from making those probability selections. The audio is awkward, especially when you're attacking owls with repeat cards and you hear the awful who spam. Or even worse, you're using the pig as your main tank as he loudly oinks each time he is hit. Finally, runs take a while. Most of my single player runs took about two to three hours to complete with my multiplayer ones taking about 3 to 5 hours, definitely longer than your average roguelike game. But I want to end the video on this. Look at this background. This building in the background is moving ever so slightly. It's nearly imperceptible, yet it is moving. This is something that the developers didn't need to do, and it's something most players wouldn't even notice. Yet the developers took the time to make this build sway ever so slightly. This type of care and passion that went into this project makes me feel good about playing this game. Across the Obelisk is one of the best deck builders around. It is a blast to play multiplayer and features an epic, well-told story. The game is well-polished, plays smoothly, and is fairly well-balanced. That's why I give Across the Obelisk a perfect 4 out of 4. So. If you're a fan of Deck Builder or rogue -esque games, I definitely recommend you try Across the Obelisk. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I played the games for the reviews live on Twitch, so make sure to check us out. Links for the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter in the description below. I do hope you have a fantastic day.